Chris Trot with Team TaylorMade. We are about to build Colin Morikawa a high toe three 58 degree wedge that he's going to test out this week. Let's get to it. So we're going to copy the former build that Colin has. He hasn't changed spec. He's just testing out the new high toe three. So into the vise like so, check out the lie angle. This comes out a little bit upright, so I'm glad I checked it, and the loft is bang on. So tighten everything up there, then just simply pre-bend a degree flatter on this club. Lie angle is the relationship between the leading edge and the golf shaft. It's also how that club goes through the turf. It is massive when it comes to wedges because you play them with off-speed shots in order to get the speed. So you put the, the club head through the turf softly quite often and that club could move. So because we move that mill grind sole around so much as players and we play the blade open, we play it closed, you really want your lie angles to be perfect. So we've pre-bent, now let's get into the rest of the club. So once I've banned the golf club in there, it's to get the hosel depth. Why is that important? Because the next step is going to be to tip grind. I want to make this slightly abrasive so that it can bond later on in the process. Simple, that's now in there. Let's get through to the gluing. We go two part on the white, one part on the honey. Mix this in here and you want to give it a little second. You're going to have to mix it extremely well so that it bonds together and has a moment just to set. It's important because later on in this process, which you'll see, I'm gonna use these curing cells, which allows the golfer to take that golf club out and use it within three and a half, four minutes of drying on this process. We use these for quick center purposes so that when this golf shaft goes in to my club head, it's gonna be perfectly in the center Remember I mentioned earlier, lie angle, how important it was. Now it impacts the next section. Back in there, USGA housing. You can see here the sole, the middle of the golf club is bang against that, it's crucial. Now it also says on Colin's order here, 35 and a quarter EOG, end of grip. I know he uses the Z grip, which has an eight of play in there when it comes to the end of that grip. So we go to 35 and 1 8th, and I mark that. Then we're gonna hit the circular saw in order to get this to the length where we need it. Safety goggles obviously on. Done. So Colin is two tapes total, but you can see in brackets here, it's one plus one. What does that mean? Well, it means he's gonna be one on build-up tape, and he's gonna be one on double-sided tape. When you put those together, it obviously gives you a different durometer, but also a different width. So it's crucial and a different weight. He also plays in the grip, this Z grip that has a cord in it. That also means it's gonna be a bit heavier. Get the tape, the length you want. This is the plus one. To a player of Collins caliber, he will feel how different this is. Important that you don't have any ridges when you put the tape on. We use quite a wide tape. It goes on perfectly like that, look. And then the second piece, which is gonna be my plus one, I'll put over the seam so that I don't get any ridges. Again, flat palm, wrap it round, no ridges is crucial. Bit of fluid, I always go an extra. And then logo down, so match it up to the decal on the golf shaft. It's a round grip, so not too concerned. I'm just making sure that those cords, those little crosses, are straight down. I'm happy with that. The golf pride's in a good place. Looks pretty good. Dry off the excess. Now you're ready to swing weight. Most important part of any club build is always gonna be swing weight. I'm gonna put it in here. That gives me a lot of weight. Then I'm gonna find the balance point. It's measured by a letter and then a number. So Colin Morikawa is gonna be looking for D5. When I add weight, it impacts it. And if you see here, it just changes the way that balance of that club is gonna be. I'm gonna get it a D four and a half, which is gonna allow me for one gram of 
glue that I would put in there in order to take that weight up to be that D5 that he plays. It's a feel. Everything about wedges is a feel. So let's get to the gluing process and I'll show you how quickly this moves. So take the weight you have in the head out, put that into the glue and cover it in the glue. That's then gonna house itself into the head, deep into the pocket. Take the weight if you want, make sure that's down, push it right into the pocket. Then all that's left, just ensure that you bang it home. Line up your dynamic gold, line up your decal. That raw face is looking fantastic. The full face score lines that you all know so much about when it comes to the high toe three. You have these score lines out in the toe for all the shots. It's looking inviting. It's looking like something that I would want to play. So this is hot, really hot. We're now at 384, 383 degrees, and it's gonna go in here for a couple of minutes, sometimes three, that'll automatically click out at the time this is dry. So all that's left now is to remove just a slight burr and it's, it's really not much, but just to get the ferrule off there and get it looking nice. You want this thing looking pure. It's for the best players in the world at the end of the day. Simply against the ferrule belt and turn. Time is your friend on this one. Keep it smooth. Doesn't need any more than that. That now is absolutely mint flush. I will add a little bit of this on there just to get it perfectly shiny but i mean i couldn't ask for any more than that remove fingerprints one swipe final check at this point for that swing weight you know you've removed the burr you've gone and got your grip on there the glue's had a chance to dry just double check everything is exactly where you want it that's the way i always go when it comes to my building that is perfect Hito 3 looks absolutely beautiful all that's left now to get it in colin morikawa's golf bag